نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وصلواته والسلام على افضل خلق الله على سيدنا وحبيبنا رسول الله وعلى اله وصحابته ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد في عباد الله اوصيكم اوصي نفسي بتقوى الله في السر والعلنيه فانما خافت الله راس الخير وراس الحكمه الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى انزل كتابا على نبيه فصدقه فهو اول المؤمنين ثم ارده على اصحابه وعلى قومه فصدقه بعضهم وكفر بعضهم والله سبحانه وتعالى بعثه بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة الحمد لله فنحن صدقناه صلى الله عليه وسلم بما اتى به من كتاب ودين وشريعة والحمد لله فهذا فضل من الله سبحانه وتعالى The Prophet وسلم, he came in a time على فترة من الرسل it was a period of time when the messengers had stopped so between him and Isa alayhi salam there aren't any messengers and Isa alayhi salam was the seal of the messengers to Bani Israel and they the majority not all of them but the majority rejected him and the Prophet ﷺ came and he took a people who were ignorant, they were living in what was called Jahiliyyah, but they had certain qualities that were very powerful. They loved truth. They hated liars. They were also people of wafa. They hated people that betrayed oaths. In fact, the Herodotus, the great Greek historian, said, of all peoples, no one takes the oath more seriously than the people of Arabia. This area was called by the Romans Arabia Felix, which means that Arabia Saida, happy Arabia. There are many, many indications from the previous dispensations of our Prophet and we find those in uh, the books that they left behind and in uh, the signs uh, that came when the Prophet ﷺ came. But one of the most important things that he reminded us of, and this is, gets to the heart of what prophets bring. He reminded us of the nature of the dunya. Because the dunya is very deceptive. It's darul ghurur. It's, a, it's an abode of delusion. It's an abode where we can easily forget, like the pilgrim in Bunyan's uh, Pilgrim's Progress. He goes and he, he's gone, he's supposed to do uh, something for the king, but by the time he gets to the vanity fair, he gets lost in the vanity fair and he forgets what he was there. And then the sun sets and he realizes the day's over. And this is distraction. Distraction is the enemy of the believer. And Iblis is the one who distracts. So the Prophet I sent him one of the most powerful reminders that he gave us is of the temporality of the dunya. And if you read the Quran, you will find this constantly in the dunya. There's almost not a page of the Quran that doesn't tell us about the ephemeral nature of dunya. So our Prophet ﷺ said, اختنم خمسا قبل خمس. اختنم means to gain for yourself. Gain five things before five things. The first one he said, shababaka qabla haramika. Your youth before your haram. Haram is when you get old and decrepit and you can't do the things that you could do when you were young. Even walking up the hill now for me is a lot harder than I was young. Because this is the nature, this is the curvilinear nature of the dunya that Allah has put us in. We grow old. We come into the world like a plant and we're watered by our caretakers. And then we grow into our strength. Hatta balagha arba'ina, you reach forty. Balagha shuddhu, he reaches his uh, climax of, of physical strength, and then he begins the downward descent. And then by the time he's fifty, he's a sheikh. Whether it's knowledge or not, 
He's the Arab, they call him Sheikh. He's a Sheikh. So the Prophet said, Shababaka qabr harmika. The Arabs say Shabbat al nar, like the fire when it uh, becomes uh, in flame. Because Shabab is, a, is, a, is like a fire, it's burning, it has uh, power. But like fires, they can get out of control. So we use controlled fires to cook our food as an energy source. But a fire, when it gets out of control, it becomes destructive. And so the youth has to have their energy controlled. If it's not controlled, then they will lose their way and go astray. And this is a, a huge problem. And then he said, Sahataka qabla saqmika, your health before your sickness. Five before five, badiru. You know, take initiative, get, claim them before these others claim you. Sahataka qabla saqmika, your health before your sickness. All of us will get sick. This is the nature of the dunya. Marabat al-Haj used to say, La khayra fi jasadan idha lam yamarad. There's no good in a body that doesn't get sick. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi one of the Sahaba came in, he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in fever. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, you, you have such intense fever. It's, it, the Arabs call it wa'ka. You know, we, in, in English we say he's out of whack. You know, from wa'k. So, tu'ak. And the Prophet Sallallahu said that he has twice the suffering of the average person. And then the Sahabi said, so you have twice the reward? He said, ajal. Yes. So the Prophet Sallallahu himself got ill. He, he fell ill, the best of creation. This is the nature of the body. You will fall ill. So when you're healthy and when you're young, you have this power and you have this ability to use it and you can dissipate it and then it's gone. And then the Prophet ﷺ, he said, غِنَاكَ قَبْلَ فَقْرِكَ Your independence before you're in need. Your wealth before your poverty. Your wealth before your poverty. Because when you have, when you, when you have enough, what suffices you, you're not in need. But when you're in need, that's all you can think about. That's what happens to people when they become impoverished. All they can think about is how I get out of this impoverishment like the aboriginals that they uh, interviewed in East Africa, these are people that just, they live every day hunting, they're hunter-gatherers. And the man, he asked him, what's the meaning of life to you? And he said, meat. He said, meat. You know, just getting food, because that's how they live, day to day. But when you have what you need, you can think about other things. This is the hierarchy of needs. The Prophet ﷺ, his first khutbah, Abshu salam, spread peace. Because you need aman. That's the first thing. What did Ibrahim ask for? His first dua about Mecca to make this a secure place. Make this a secure place. That was before asking for anything else. Security. Because if you have no security, then your life is pure misery. And that's why the worst places are places where there's war. And that's why the Prophet he avoided war if he could. لا تتمنوا لقاء العدو. Don't don't hope to seek the enemy. وصل الله العافية صحة. وصل الله العافية well being. وإن لقيتموه فثبتوا. But if you're forced to meet them, then be courageous. Ibn Abi Jamra in his commentary on that he says, don't desire to meet them because you don't know the outcome. You don't know that it might be a tribulation for you. You might lose the battle. You might end up a captive. Al-Afiyah, Ibn Abbas saw a group of people in ibtila, in tribulation. He said, oh, Al-Afiyah, didn't they ask Allah for Afiyah? The Prophet asked every day for Afiyah, Allah means to call Afu Al-Afiyah, wa Mu'afat Al-Da'ima, fi dini wa dunyaya. These were his concerns, because if you have Afiyah, you have so much, so Siha, qabla saqmika, because it's coming. And you don't know when it will come, how it will come, but when it comes, it devastates you. Ibadah becomes difficult. Ibadah becomes difficult. Ghinaka qabla faqarika. And then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wa hayataka qabla mamatika o mawtika, faragaka qabla shughrika. 
your leisure time before you're preoccupied. The Prophet ﷺ said, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ Two great blessings, the vast majority of people. Kathir, many, many people are deprived of these two blessings. As-sahatu wal faragh Health and leisure. Because you have leisure time. People here, you, you have this time to study. And then you're on TikTok or something. Wasting your time. Allah has given you time. Many people don't have time. People used to, many, if you read stories of the, of, of the people before this generation, many people had to leave school when they were in eighth grade. Either the father died. They would go to work. This was life. Now people have so much entitlement. So he said, use your leisure time before your preoccupation. You will be preoccupied. Use it. And then your life before your death. Because once death comes, right? When the ajr comes, they can't put it off. Not even a moment. They can't put it off. Nor can they bring it forward. When it comes, it comes. We saw in the earthquake that happened, there were people there buried under the rubble. Days later, they found them alive. Because their ajal wasn't there. People buried under rubble for days. In the mudslide in Pakistan, I read about a lady who was completely covered, but there was water that was trickling down. She lasted over two weeks because she just got the water to go into her mouth to keep her hydrated. When ajal comes, you can't, you can't avoid the, the, the ajal. If it's meant to come, it's meant to come. The, 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 uh, the people, when that earthquake came, and this is... You know, one of the things, because somebody called me and said, oh, what does this mean? This is life on earth. Modern people are so divorced from, from tribulation. They, and this is, Ibn Atayla, he says that, you know, one of the things that Allah does, the reason why tribulation is difficult, is because we're so accustomed to his ihsan. So when the tribulation comes, it suddenly we're shaken up. But that's part of the purpose. The zilzal is to shake people up. The Prophet ﷺ said, جَاءَتَ الرَّاجِفَ جَاءَتَ الرَّاجِفَ إِنَّ سَعَةَ إِنَّ زَلْزَرَةَ سَعَةَ شَيْءٌ عَظِيمٌ the, the shaking of the hour. How could we know what the shaking of the hour was if we don't see earthquakes in the dunya? We're told that the whole world, إِذَا رُجَّتَ الْأَرْضُ How could we know what that means? If we didn't have examples, if Allah doesn't send examples, Sahib al Hadmi Shaheed, the one who died there, he's a, he's a martyr. He's a, he's a martyr. She's a martyr. They're, they found the Imam with his subha and his family, he dead. His family said he never left tahajjud. At 4.17 in the morning, he was probably up doing tahajjud. Hopefully, many of them, before they went to bed, they did what the Prophet ﷺ told them to do. He said, if you, and this is in Al Bukhari, he said, if you go to your bed, قُلْ Say, when you go to your bed, you know, get on your right side. Say, Allahumma aslamtu nafsi ilayk. Aslamtu nafsi ilayk. I have given my life to you in submission. That's the reality. You're just admitting it. That's the reality. You're just being a Muslim by admitting it. Everybody is in Islam to Allah. But there's conscious Muslimun, and then there's the people that don't even know. That they're in submission to Allah. Aslamtu nafsi ilayk, wa aljahtu dhahri ilayk, wa fawatu amri ilayk, rahbatan wa rahbatan ilayk. Out of, I, I've put my, given my back to you out of desire for you. Rahbatan wa rahbatan ilayk. La maljaa, wa la manja minka illa ilayk. Amantu bi kitabika aladhi anzalt, wa bi rasulika aladhi arsalt. This is what we're supposed to say. And the Prophet said, if you die, إِذَا mitta, If you die in the night, mitta عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ You died on fitrah. That means it's like you died as a newborn baby. كُلُّ مَوْلُودٍ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ So you're ready to go back to Allah. So there were people that were ready to go back to Allah. But all of the people who died there, if they were believers, are martyrs. They just have different maqamat. And this is one of the tribulations, but the real crises, 
is in the, the corruption. People say, well, how could all these people die? The corruption, because people have forgotten Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't have, we have buildings here that are coded to withstand 9.0 earthquake in San Francisco, 9.0. That's almost unheard of, 9.0. In Japan, we were in Japan, I was in a building with Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayya, and the building started shaking. We went into sajda, you know, that's the sunnah. You see in California, they have all the things, what you should do in an earthquake, and they have a picture of a man in sajda. <laughs> I'm not making this up, you can go and look. It's a picture of a man in sajda. So we went into sajda, but in Japan, they have wheels in the buildings that drop down when it starts to shake, so they just roll. Because they actually care about people's lives. But there's venal, greedy people that don't care about people's lives. These are people on the Day of Judgment. And this is where the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزالوا قدم عبد يوم القيامة A man will not move on the day حتى يسهل He'll be asked. He'll be asked about his life and how he spent it. His life and how he spent it. His knowledge. يسهل عن علمه ما فعل What did he do with his knowledge? يسهل عن ماله أين اكتسب وكيف أنفق On his wealth. What did he do with it and how did he spend it? He'll be asked about his body and how ما أبلاه وعن جسمه فيما أبلاه on his body and what he did with his body. This gift that we've been given to take care of. The ancient Chinese said that a, the, a human being has to preserve his health because the soul needs time to be perfected. So there's a duty. That's why the Prophet was so concerned about health. Aisha's uh, nephew said that the, 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 he asked her how he knew so, she knew so much about medicine. This is in uh, the Habib's book on Tib. And she said, because I always heard the Prophet discussing things with doctors. And then she, they, she said his, uh, the kitchen was like an apothecary's kitchen because he, he, he used herbs and different things to treat. And there's many, many amazing hadiths about uh, treat, treatment. The Prophet ﷺ scanned one of the Sahaba came and he complained, Yashtaki qalbuhu. The Prophet put his hand on his chest and he said, Inna ka maf'ud. You have a heart condition. He said, Il haq bil harith al karadh. Go and see al harith fa innahu yatatabab. He's a doctor. So he was given referral. He literally diagnosed him like a, like a scan now. You go in and they do an ultrasound. He, he just put his hand on his chest. This is our, our Prophet he, he, he was a miracle walking. We believed him. We are believers. We believed him. The Prophet told us the earth had a beginning. The whole cosmos had a beginning. What did they say then? The scientists of that time, they called them philosophers. They said, no, the earth has always been here. The, the heavens have always been here. This was Aristotle's opinion. These were the scientists of their age, the ulama. Even some of the Muslims fell into that trap and believed them. And now our scientists say, oh, the universe had a beginning. 1400 years ago, we believed that, our ummah. When they were saying, no, it's always been here. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, the universe has an end. They called it the big crunch. Tayy. And the, and, the, and the scientists at that time, they said, no, the universe will go on forever. It's always been here. But we believed him. And now the scientists say, oh, the universe comes to an end. The prophet said, you will die and you will be raised up. The scientists today, they say, ah, we're just matter. We become stones. Even Allah says, become stones, become iron, become whatever he wants, but you will be raised up. Allah tells them, kunu hijara, but go ahead, be, be stones, be whatever you want. Yeah, you're that material matter, but he's going to bring you back. He's going to bring that coccyx back, the seed there that, that, that you cannot destroy, which we believe is somewhere. Well, who knows what, it could be like a quark or a neutrino, but it's there, and we will be recreated. Our Prophet ﷺ promised us that. So these are the, the, the reminders that the Prophet gave us. Finally, 
as a great reminder. He said, Badru bil amali sab'an. Preempt with your actions seven things. Preempt them. It's similar to these five, but he added some more to, as reminders. We have to preempt the, 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 before we see the, the, the haram, we, we, we use our youth. Before we see the, the poverty, we use. But then he added a dajjal. A dajjal. Sharru ghaibin yuntadar. The worst of things that are coming. We're moving into, even recently, the head of the major Christian church, they revealed a letter that he said about believing it was the antichristic age. There are many aspects, but one of the things about the age of the antichrist, the Dajjal, Masih al-Dajjal, is people stop mentioning him on the mimbar. So nobody even thinks about the Dajjal. But the Dajjal is real. And there are many Dajjajila, many Dajjajila, people that come with promises. So the Prophet ﷺ warned us about that. Wasa'a, wasa'atu adha wa amar. The sa'a will come. The three sa'a, the sa'a of our life. That sa'a came for the people in Turkey when the earthquake came. If they were decreed to die, it came for them, and Allah took them. And then the sa'a of a generation. We're a generation. We'll be gone, maybe a year, two years, maybe a month, maybe a day. None of us knows. This is why he said, Badiru bil amal. You know, quickly. Hayate qabla mawtik. Like your life before you die. Because once you die, Rabbi arji'ni amal sariha. You know, let me go back. I'll, I promise I'll do good. Right? But Allah says, no, I'm, you had your time. And you, you wasted it. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of, of mubadara, you know, of taking the initiative, make us people who, who uh, think deeply about what we're here for because the Rabbana ma kharaqta hadha batra subhanaka faqina adhab al-nar. Raghab Isfahani says that when they said that, Rabbana ma kharaqta hadha batra, they understood that this is purpose. And that's why the first thing they said, save us. In other words, there's an accountability. This is not sabah lala. This is not abath. This is not uh, foolishness. This is a real place and it has real consequences. And our lives will determine the harvest in the afterlife.